Well, howdy hello everybody and welcome to our Dutch oven cooking video. We're going to make a beef stew. But before we do that, I thought Grant, who's um, sitting across from me there uh, across the table, I thought I would have him talk to you about the Dutch oven, the parts of it. And he's also going to talk to you about cleaning and seasoning a Dutch oven briefly. So take it away, Grant. Okay, this is a large Dutch oven I've had for a few years. Hadn't used it very much. And you can see the inside of it. Yeah. Now, Dutch ovens, because they're cast iron, the surface tends to be fairly fairly rough. And so I took a, a small sander and, and sanded it to smooth off the, the roughness of the surface here. And then the process for seasoning it, once you've got it sanded, clean it, wash it, dry it off with a little heat and then use whatever kind of oil you want it really doesn't matter much um, because the oil is going to be polymerized with heat to create your seasoning effect on the surface and that you can see it's got a sort of a tell them how place. you applied the oil and how you did it in basically the you uh, have an oven at 350 degrees you put the oil on the surface Ideally, you turn the Dutch oven upside down so that it's not going to have puddles on the inside. And uh, what did you What did you do to turn it upside down so the oil didn't drip? I just put it on a pizza just pan. Just put it on a pizza pan. Okay. And let it run for like half an hour, 30 minutes or so. And then take it out and treat it again with a paper towel and, and oil and so you just rub it on with a paper towel you don't paper towel. you don't brush it on you just no, rub it, it on. doesn't really matter it's you okay. just have to get the oil on the surface do you do it just one time three times three times okay and so you've got how long do you leave it in the oven each time half an hour now when you take it out you really don't have to let it cool all you have to do is just recover it and uh -huh. then put it back in the oven and, get and it did you do the lid do did the lid as well the lid still had some seasoning from the first time I'd ever done it, and so I did another re-seasoning, and there's some puddling on the top, but that's not really going to matter because that's probably going to burn off when the coals are put in it. Okay. The, li the lip there is to keep all the coals on the, on the lid. And, and seasoning does what to a pan? It basically uh, makes it a non-stick surface. It's the primitive non-stick surface. Very cool. Talk to us about the pan lifter, the lid lifter. Okay, so uh, because you need to remove the lid and you don't want to drop it and you don't want your hands down close to it, even with gloves on, because if you're putting coals on the lid, that's going to be a problem. And so they make these very interesting little tools. And you can pick up the lid with coals on it without having it tip. So that's that, cool. that makes life a little simpler from yeah. the standpoint of... Uh, making everything work and not have things fall down. Okay, well we have a, we have our fire going. We're building up a bed of coals out there. I'm going to go in and prepare vegetables and then we'll come back out and show you the next step. So here's our setup. We're using this, um, it's actually a plant stand, a metal plant stand. It'll raise the bottom of the Dutch oven up about five or six inches. And we've got coals down underneath. Sometimes that may be too hot. We may have to move those coals out and form a ring around the trivet. It's hard to tell at this point. We're going to try it this way, though. So now Grant is going to go ahead and place the Dutch oven on top. Okay, Grant just put... About a tablespoon. I think you need another tablespoon. Another mm. big hunk. Yeah, another big hunk. Because mm -hmm. remember, when you cook the meat, you're almost deep frying it in a way. Okay. You want a lot of, yeah. So that's about two tablespoons or so of coconut oil. And he's going to dump the uh, meat in as well. Put you on pause while we do that. Okay, so Grant's put the meat in. We're going to cook this meat uncovered, um, just like this for a little while. He's going to stir it around, and we're going to be just kind of browning it. 
for the next few minutes um, in the in the olive oil. I mean, in the in the coconut oil. Um, when we're done browning, I'm going to add some seasoned um, so, uh, flour to that and about oh a cup and a half or so of water. All right, this meat is beautifully browning and so it's now time to add our seasoned flour. We're going to kind of make a roux. So Grant's going to go ahead and just dump it all in there and just dump. You don't have to sprinkle. Yeah, that's beautiful. Just let it all in. I'll take the, the bag from you. And then you can go ahead and stir that around. And again, the idea is we're making a roux, so we're going to stir that till all the flour is incorporated down into the um, down into the bottom of the pot where the coconut oil is hiding. Okay. And just um, I'll go ahead and give uh, just kind of stir that a little bit for the next. I don't know. Well, I think I think we're about there on the roux. See, look at how thick it is. Yeah. Okay, now if you want to rest that spoon, you can go ahead and pour in some water. Mm. Yeah, pour in about, I don't know, a couple cups of water. That's about one, and that is about two. Beautiful. Give it a little stir. And now let's put the, the lid back on it, uh, but without coals. Let's wait. Uh, we'll put the coals, coals on when we put the vegetables in, which will be fairly, fairly quickly. And you know, I'm thinking we're going to need just a little bit more water. Let's go for another, um, another big glug. Another big glug. That's lovely. Yeah, that looks better. Because this is cooking nicely, so that water is going to evaporate pretty quickly. Well, a little will keep it from yeah. evaporating as fast. Yeah. Okay, so Grant's going to cover that up with the lid. And we're going to come back and show you the, um, uh, the vegetable portion. All right, we're ready to put the vegetables in. It's been about 10 minutes and this uh, meat is cooking very well and quickly. Um, I wanted to give you a nice side view so you could see that the Dutch oven is just about touching those coals. And um, this seems to be a real good uh, setup. We may have to be start turning the no, Dutch I, oven. I already lift, I, I raised it and leveled it. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. All right. So you want to put that up there on the rock so it doesn't get any dirt. And uh, go ahead and drop those in there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. You want to give that a little stir? Oh, yeah. Now I could actually add another onion, a few more potatoes, and uh, and carrots, and a couple more carrots. I think a stew, personally, it's all about the potatoes, the onions, and the meat. Carrots, for me, are more of a garnish. Now, let's talk about what you can add to the stew, depending on your taste. Um, I've seen people add fresh or canned tomatoes, mushrooms, chopped up cilantro or parsley. You could put kale in there chopped up. Um, you know, you could do peppers. I mean, any manner of thing that you think belongs to into in a stew can be incorporated in this. I should do, go ahead and cover that. Maybe you know, there's usually not space. You want to hand me that red ball? I'm going to go ahead. I've only got a, one more onion and a couple more uh, potatoes left. Okay, so now that's covered. I'm going to go cut up a few more vegetables. Then we're going to dump them in and we're going to put the coals on the top. All right, honey, I've uh, chopped up the last of the onion and potato and a little more carrot. So let's go ahead and open her up. Getting up there boiling again. Okay. Very nice. And I'm going to hand you the wooden spoon when you're ready. And you can 
give her a little stir. Oh, yeah, let's take a look. At, look at how it's doing on the bottom. Oh yeah, that's lovely. Just beautiful. You need some more liquid, huh? Yeah, I think so. Pour down there. I'll get okay. Is it still here by me? Nope, the show is over on the uh, okay. Alright, so while he's grabbing the water, I'm going to get you in nice and tight so you can see. I mean, those onions are beginning to get translucent. And, I mean, you know, you can really see that this is going well. Let's go ahead and glug with some of that. And... Uh, I'd say about like that. Probably is good. All right. Okay, so now Grant is going to go ahead, recover it, and he's going to place hot coals on the top of the lid. And I'm going to hand you your wooden spoon back so you can put that aside. And pretty simple procedure. You just grab some hot coals out of the out of our lovely fire pit with a shovel. Couldn't be simpler. You just put some smaller pieces of wood in there a while back. Good enough. Okay, and maybe what you can do when you use the pot lifter the or the lid lifter, you can go ahead and e easily put it right there on those rocks. That way it's fairly close to you. Yeah. And low so it's not gonna accidentally fall over. Right. Well, actually we've got some I just need to put other rocks. Yeah. Other yeah. rocks. I'm putting the rock around so it's level. I'll just make yeah. it Find a level rock. There you go. Yeah, I was going to have him put it there, but there's pine needles there. We don't want to, um... You don't want to catch them on fire? Yeah. Yeah. Take fire that away. level rock's perfect. The one you I just... Yeah, I don't think you need anything else but that. I wouldn't hurt anything if the pine needles catch on fire. Well, what there. you could do is you could move the rock right over here next to your, um, on the ground. That's what I would do. Yeah, that's true. That's pretty good. And uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm wondering if you might want to flip that rock over so that the you don't have that um, the convex part to the top. See how it forms a little hill? If you turned it over, it'll be flatter. Yeah, yeah, that's well, beautiful. That one's the dirty side. And it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's not that dirty. Okay. okay, so there you go. So now we have our flat rock to put our um, lid on. Now, what I've read is you're supposed to wait an hour. I don't think this is going to take an hour. No. <laughs> so, you know, just go ahead um, and we will check it. You know, maybe every ten minutes or so at first, and if it's not cooking quickly, then we'll go to every thirty. Okay. How's that? Okay, so now comes the now comes the fun part. We wait. <laughs> wait with hungry bellies. Okay, now Grant is going to take the lid off and we're going to do our first check and see how well things are cooking. Oh, look at that. That is at a nice simmer. Let's give it a uh, I'm going to let let Grant come back around here and give it a stir. See, that works really well. Yeah. Yeah, that works real well. Here you go, honey. And, oh, that's just looking great. Doesn't that look wonderful? Yep. I think at that... I think I need a few more coals in the bottom there. Do you? I think that's cooking beautifully. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not overboiling and it's not a small simmer. It's a nice, nice simmer. Okay, let's put the lid back on and go for a half an hour. Okay. Do you think? Sure. I'll hold your wooden spoon for you. 
Boy, there's nothing like a beautifully made wooden spoon. Makes everything just wonderful. If you feel like adding more coals, go go ahead. Whatever you want to do, at this point. Yeah, I think and uh, all righty, we'll we'll watch you add some coals, and then we'll come back in a half an hour. Okay, Grant. Okay, Grant added some coals to the bottom. He's um. Putting more hunks of wood, though, we're running out of the proper sized um, coals. So we're not using briquettes, incidentally. This is all just wood fire. So we're going to leave you for about a half an hour, then come back and take a look. Okay. As you can see, Grant um, added more coals. I'm going to have him go ahead and take the lid off because I want to check the water level. We're uh, lo you know, you lose a lot of steam. Now, honey, if you can give that a um, a stir. Yeah, we got plenty of liquid. I mean, we're losing some steam, definitely. No, no two ways about it. Well, if we want to go for another half hour, I think we need more liquid in there. That is just enough liquid f for a done stew. So we know that it's going to lose a lot more. Okay. As it continues to cook. Okay. And then if we really want to cook off some liquid, you just take the lid off and cook it off. Um, uh, have you checked on the doneness of any of, like, the carrots? No, or? but I don't think they're going to be done. Okay. Remember, I, we're, we're at altitude, and altitude I, means things cook slower. Give, give me a nice... Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh, that's lovely. Okay. See, at higher altitude, it boils at a lower temperature, so it cooks takes longer to cook. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Okay. That's making me feel better. I have this horrible nightmare that I'm going to come out here, and all the water will be gone, and it will all be dried out and sticking to the sides of the pan. <laughs> oh, shoot. God, I'm a nervous Nelly when it comes to Dutch oven cooking. Okay, um, next time we come back to you, uh, we're going to show you the finished product. Not quite sure how long that's going to take us. What, 30 minutes well, to an hour? It take longer than that. Yeah, 30 minutes to an hour probably. So we'll come back and we'll show you the finished stew. Hey, it is almost 8 o'clock in the evening. Stew's been cooking for, we figure, about two hours. Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Yeah, and we're now going to... Call it done. I'm just going to go ahead and take that lid off. Oh, it looks beautiful. It looks just perfect. Here. Now he's already checked the vegetables for doneness. And they are, they are just as tender as they can be. Why don't you give her one more stir? Yeah, it's because I think it's a little high on that. So, a little high. And, no, a little high on the other side. That's beautiful. That's perfect. Chances are it's not going to have a, maybe as much salt as you're used to, but that's okay. We'll survive. Now we're going to want to take it off the fire at this point and put it somewhere. Well, we can put it Just right over on the concrete. Over there on, on the concrete. Okay. Or on the stone porch there. Oh, that scares me. That scares me. Why would that scare you? Not a problem at all. Grant's using his um, vice grip as a pot lifter. What all right. For? So what we'll do is, of course, we'll, as soon as all this is cool, we'll um, uh, shovel it back into the fire pit there. But that is the conclusion of our uh, kind of our maiden voyage with that with that Dutch oven. Did you did you like it, honey? Oh, yeah. I think it works great. All right. Perfect timing. Um, we just have the last little bit of light. We've got our stew all dished up, looking beautiful. 
we're going to serve it with some very fresh store-bought French bread that we picked up on the way. And you can show them the last of the light up on the hill. Oh, last of the light up on the hill. And Grant, why don't you take a little taste if it's if it's cool enough for you? Yeah, we'll see. See what you think. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so there you go. The uh, the culmination of a of a day's hard work. <laughs> Thank you, Grant Honey, for doing all the work. You did a great job.